Well, it's been a great day, everyone. This is the last session, and uh, so I'm glad that you still have the energy to stay and learn from this great panel that you'll be introduced to. Uh, it's three, well, three o'clock Central Time, uh, which is where I'm speaking from. So, uh, bonjour, um, good day, and bonjour. Uh, my name is Linda Connor, and I'll be your moderator for today. And I'm honored to be speaking to you from Treaty One land and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Um, today, uh, we have uh, a panel of experts who will help us uh, uh, understand and experience elections and democracy. And uh, for those teachers who are always looking for a resource that they can take into their classroom immediately on Monday morning, this is the resource for you. I can guarantee you that. Um, I've uh, been honored to work with our Manitoba representative and our teachers uh, always appreciate the innovative, creative uh, programs that are offered learning experiences for students um, to help them understand elections. Um, and uh, I love how the program uh, through Elections Canada um, embeds history, geography, democracy, and social activism. And they seem to just weave through every single uh, program. And with us on our panel today, we certainly do have a, a group of experts. Many of you have met uh, Rachel Collishaw throughout uh, the last night and today, uh, who's been really instrumental in uh, helping with the planning and uh, programming and is today presenting on this panel. I like her title when I looked it up on Elections Canada. She's the pedagogical advisor and I thought that was a really great title. I've never seen that before and uh, obviously you're dealing with someone who's thinking about uh, you in the classroom and the things that you need. And we have uh, Judy, and hopefully, Judy, I'll pronounce your name correctly, Twidel, uh, who is going to uh, uh, speak en français and will uh, talk about the work that uh, she's been doing in Elections Canada on the French side. And we also have uh, Mathieu, and Mathieu is with the um, Library of Parliament. Uh, I know as an educator, I used many of the resources that were available online. Um, I like the one in particular that was uh, setting an agenda, how politicians set an agenda and have to prioritize whom they're going to meet with. My students in grade nine really like that. So Matu, uh, thank you for joining us. So to start with, we're going to begin with uh, Judy. Thank you. I, I think we're starting with Matthew. Oh, sorry, Matthew, <laughs> you're right. Oh, we just okay, talked we about that. Too. How could I? How could I forget? <laughs> Matthew, there we go. Not a problem at all. Uh, thank you, Linda, um, and uh, thank you to the uh, to the host organizations for uh, for inviting me to to come and speak alongside uh, Judy and and Rachel. Um, I'm I'm going to start with uh, talking a little bit about kind of the end of the process. I'm I'm joined by two experts who will kind of show you how the sausage is made, um, and I'm going to display it kind of in its end result, which is what do we get at the end of an election? We get a parliament, um, and whether that's at the provincial or at the federal level. Um, we'll be speaking specifically about the National Parliament in Ottawa, simply because that's the organization that I represent. Um, to begin with, the, the Library of Parliament, for those of you who don't know, um, is one of the three components of, of the Parliament building. So we have the Senate, the House, and the Library. And the Library is a nonpartisan organization that uh, serves both the House and the Senate and contributes to Canadian parliamentary democracy by managing, delivering uh, authoritative and reliable knowledge to parliamentarians and Parliament. Um, our mission really is to serve parliamentarians. We are a library first and foremost, uh, but you'll notice that of the four mission points I've listed on my PowerPoint here, our last one is to support parliamentarians and their outreach to the public by providing opportunities for Canadians to access experience and learn about Parliament. So this is kind of where our shop, I'm the manager of education and learning at the Library of Parliament, uh, kind of fits in. Um, 
although I deal with a specific subset of uh, resources for teachers and classrooms, um, our kind of division, parliamentary education programs, um, runs the guide program. So if any of you have ever taken a tour of the parliament buildings or brought a classroom, um, our team is responsible for that as well. Uh, we do uh, the, the new virtual reality program, which I'll be talking about a little bit at the end of my presentation. Um, if you've seen the videos for that, our team is responsible uh, as well. So we, we do a little bit of everything, but our main goal is to do that outreach on behalf of parliamentarians. Um, when it comes to the classroom specifically, uh, we have a series of resources, and I'm only highlighting three of them here in my presentation, but there are, there are others, um, including uh, the one that Linda mentioned at the beginning, which is setting the agenda, where you kind of are a parliamentary staffer and you have to go through the day prioritizing the events that your MP or your senator would want to attend or have to attend. Um, when it comes kind of closer to the legislative process, though, teaching Canadian school children um, how the legislative process works, uh, we have three core activities. And the first one is Bill on the Hill, which is uh, for grades four to six, uh, au Quebec, six, deux et trois. Um, it can be adapted for older grades. It can be actually adapted for almost any age group. Uh, we've had um, the uh, organizations actually come to Ottawa to do tours with uh, new Canadians, with immigrants uh, who are also learning English at the same time and who have used Bill on the Hill in their classrooms as well to, to teach kind of uh, basic language skills as well as the, the basics of the legislative process. So it is kind of wide ranging. Um, our second here is the uh, a parliamentary committee simulation. Um, and, and the uh, committee simulation, we're, we're actually in the process of redoing, we're, we're starting to, to redo it, um, but we're not going to be changing the fundamentals of the activity. We're looking at kind of just updating it and making it more modern um, in how it, it explains the process as well as how teachers kind of use the resource in the classroom, whereas the basics of how the committees run and how we explain that will stay the same. Um, it's actually an excellent resource where we've gotten our best feedback from teachers who use it um, as a decision-making or problem-solving activity in their classrooms, especially with the younger grades. Um, and we've had quite a few teachers uh, who've used the activity in their classroom really like it specifically because it really is designed to involve all sorts of different skill sets. So, you know, when we do something like the model parliament or bill on the hill, it's often the louder kids who, who can speak really easily or very well or, or, or who participate uh, verbally in the classroom uh, who will get to shine in these types of activities. And, and the parliamentary simulation is really wonderful because it includes roles for people who might have stronger rights skills who might not be those strong talkers or arguers in the classroom um, but who can bring different skill sets and, and we've done that by incorporating uh, journalists and the media so part of the activity is for students to write up about the committee's work and to write up um, you know do interviews with the the members of the committee and, and the clerks and, and whatnot the last activities I'm, I'm highlighting here, the model parliament, um, is really kind of our, our showboat. It's our largest activity, and it's, it's actually adaptable to three different lengths in the classroom. So if you're looking to do a quick simulation, it can be adapted for a two to three period um, activity. So, you know, estimating about an hour per classroom period. Um, or it can be stretched out in its enriched format to 12 to 17 uh, periods in the classroom. So depending on how you know, intense or, or how in, in depth you wanna get with the activity or the content with, uh, with your classroom. Now to um, really kind of buttress your experience as a teacher in, in providing this resource, we, we actually have a te teacher resource page um, which you can access and take a look at. And, and on this page, you'll find basically all the same stuff we offer parliamentarians in terms of explaining, you know, offices like the governor general, uh, the speakers, what a senator does, what members of the House of Commons do, what uh, members of parliament do. Uh, and you'll find uh, infographics, uh, all sorts of uh, printouts and, and digital resources that'll help you kind of explain that context to your students. Um, we've recently also been kind kind of working to uh, develop new content 
uh, that is easy to access online. So we have a whole new video series that we've developed over the last year that uh, go into depth about concepts like responsible government, um, who parliamentarians are, uh, what a day in the life of a parliamentarian looks like. And these are um, in very simple language using, uh, you know, really uh, high saturated graphics. Um, and, you know, we encourage you, this is actually just a screenshot of our YouTube channel, uh, to head over there if you have a chance. Uh, all you have to do is search Parliament of Canada on YouTube and this should come up. And you can kind of use these resources in your classroom as a way to just very quickly explain certain basic concepts to your classroom before starting an activity. Um, over the, the, the pandemic year, you know, we've had to scale back a lot of our in-person opportunities or all of our in-person opportunities, and we've redirected a lot of that to interactive learning forums. And, and what I'm showing you on the screen right now is actually a new game. It was just posted about a week ago to our website. Um, and it's, well, it's almost that setting the agenda activity that Linda mentioned before, but um, spun through a different lens. So here we uh, encourage the user to create an avatar and they can choose to be a member of the house or a member of the Senate, um, and it brings them through the day. And, and you'll notice there are three metrics. There's a parliamentary profile, a public profile, and a personal profile. And throughout the day, you're given these choices where you get to go one way or another. And at the end, it tabulates everything. And based on how you've scored throughout all three of those metrics, we have one of 35 different um, results that you can end up with, uh, everything from becoming the prime minister to your family leaving you kind of thing. So it's it's very, very wide scope and, and, and intends to kind of humanize people who work on the Hill and, and give you an idea of exactly what the tensions are for parliamentarians in their everyday lives and, and trying to balance their work. So this is something very new. You can, you can head to our website now to check this out, um, but uh, we'll actually be folding it into a, a wider redo of the website that I'll be talking about at the end. Um, uh, many of you have probably also heard of our virtual uh, experience. Um, I won't go to the website because it, it, it's a beautiful website, high graphic content, uh, very slow when you scroll through it on um, a Zoom meeting. So uh, if, you, if you have a chance, uh, it'll usually be one of the big first headers you'll see if you, you head to our main site. Um, the virtual experience is now available on, on Steam, so you can download it for an Oculus set if you have one at home. Um, there are versions that are meant for lower tech, but we're soon to start rolling out the classroom version of this. So in uh, a few months, you know, we're waiting for this return to the classroom to be more settled and for teachers to be in a better place to kind of plan activities like this, but we'll be sending out full classroom sets of ocular headsets to classrooms from coast to coast, and they'll be able to do this activity with their kids in the classroom. Um, and this will be a free activity that you'll order from the Library of Parliament, and that you'll be able to, to bring into your classroom for a set amount of time and then ship it back to us. And, and this is something that we'll, we'll send through the country, because as you know, the center block is closed until at least 2030. That's if the estimates are right. Um, and so, you know, this is something that we wanted to produce so that, you know, an entire generation of school kids at least got to see this, this magnificent building as it, uh, as it exists. Um, just to, to wrap up here, some of the, the last few things that I'll, I'll touch on, and I, I won't get into this a lot because we had a session about it this morning, but um, the library also does a lot of uh, professional development and outreach, especially with teachers. Um, we uh, do it with parliamentarians too, it's the other side of, of my job, but um, with teachers and with the public, um, our two big programs, as I mentioned, are the, are, are the tours, the parliamentary public tours, uh, and then the Teachers Institute. And the Teachers Institute, uh, since about 1996, we've been bringing about 70 teachers from across Canada to Ottawa to learn about civics uh, from the source, right? From the speaker, from, from the, uh, the clerks, uh, from the experts. So we're hoping to get back to this program in November of 2022, uh, but you know, we, we're gonna be safe before any Anything else. So we'll, uh, we'll keep everyone updated uh, as, as time goes by. Um, what's been nice about, again, the COVID year, uh, if you want to spin it in any way, is, is we've actually been able to have a wider reach than we've had before. Um, I don't know if this has been an experience that my colleagues will touch on, but um, you know, we haven't been able to do TI, so we haven't been able to bring people to Ottawa, but we've been doing peer-led tutorial sessions with teachers. So we've been offering a program where we partner with school divisions to offer one-hour PD sessions delivered by our alumni and by our TAC members 
to uh, go through some of our resources with teachers directly, answer questions, kind of uh, do the basic work of, of teaching them how to use our stuff. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's been really nice. And that's kind of some of the stuff we want to keep going with to, to show Canadians uh, and, and Canadian kids, especially uh, how, how democracy works in our country. So um, I'll just leave you with our, our website, learn.parl.ca um, is the main site where you can find everything we just spoke of. Um, it will be turning into understanding parliament in uh, a number of months, probably sometime in the new year, uh, with a, a beautiful flashy site with lots of infographics and new articles and content. So we, we ask you to, to stay uh, tuned, but for now it's still learn.parl.ca. Um, and if ever you want to reach out to us, you want to learn more, you want to talk about the resources or about any of our professional development opportunities, please feel free to reach out to us at uh, education at parl.gc.ca or education uh, à commercial parl.gc.ca. Uh, on that, I think I hope I've stayed to my time. Uh, I'll let uh, Judy pick it up. Thank you very much. I'll just add while we're waiting for Judy to come on, merci beaucoup, Mathieu. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, the Teachers Parliamentary Institute as an educator is one of my greatest uh, experiences. And uh, um, the stat being part of the standing committees um, was something that I'd never experienced before. And uh, I certainly have since that time taken the opportunity to attend standing committee meetings in my own province when they move across the country. So teachers, if you haven't been part or signed up for a Teachers Parliamentary Institute, I recommend it. Thanks, uh, Judy. Okay, sorry, I was looking for my, <laughs> my sound. Uh, bonjour. Um, thank you, uh, Linda. Uh, donc, uh, je m'appelle Judy Twaddell. Donc, la présentation sera en français, mais my PowerPoint is in English. So, hopefully, it will work. Um, je suis conseillère en éducation uh, à Élection Québec depuis um, presque trois ans maintenant. Uh, puis, c'est avec plaisir là, que j'ai accepté l'invitation d'Élection Canada de participer à cette table ronde. Ça me fait plaisir d'être avec vous aujourd'hui. Donc, euh, ben, quelques mots sur euh, Élection Québec, en fait. Euh, donc, <rire> Élection Québec est responsable d'appliquer la loi électorale euh, au Québec, euh, d'organiser les élections provinciales, les référendums euh, et de s'assurer aussi euh, du respect là, euh, du règle de financement et de la protection euh, des droits électoraux des citoyens et des citoyennes. Mais euh, nous avons là un autre mandat euh, ou une autre partie de la mission qui euh, nous parle là, de tout ce qui est euh, promotion euh, des valeurs démocratiques du Québec. Donc, euh, c'est un peu euh, comme ça que depuis trois ans, euh, 30 ans, pardon, nous avons développé euh, une... Euh, expertise là, en matière euh, d'éducation à la démocratie, euh, basée sur la recherche, puis la coopération et la collaboration avec différents partenaires. Euh, on a développé aussi différents programmes et initiatives euh, à mettre en place là, euh, dans les écoles pour favoriser la culture démocratique euh, chez les jeunes. Donc, euh, c'est un peu là, de ça que je vais vous parler euh, aujourd'hui. Alors, euh, pour nous, les citoyens, euh, les citoyennes engagées, bien, ça constitue une force d'action dans notre société. Euh, puis, euh, nous sommes convaincus à l'Élection Québec qu'on peut faire de nos jeunes des personnes euh, engagées, critiques et informées. Mais pour cela, il faut évidemment développer leurs compétences euh, qui vont leur permettre d'exercer cette euh, citoyenneté-là. Donc, euh, nos programmes sont, euh, je dirais, euh, développé là, en, avec euh, en tête quatre grands principes euh, que je vais vous présenter aujourd'hui. Donc, euh, la démocratie, ça commence tôt. La, dé la démocratie, ça s'apprend. La démocratie, ça se vit. Et enfin, euh, la démocratie, ça se partage. Alors, premier principe. Premier principe, la démocratie, ça commence tôt. Euh, donc, plus euh, les jeunes vont apprendre euh, tôt euh, et prendre conscience là, de l'héritage de ce que c'est de vivre dans une démocratie, plus ils risquent de participer euh, activement à l'âge adulte. Alors, le cheminement pour devenir un citoyen responsable, ça commence bien avant euh, d'avoir 18 ans, bien avant de se présenter euh, pour la première fois euh, aux urnes. Donc, euh, 
On a un programme que peut-être que certains d'entre vous connaissent, les petits bureaux de vote, un small polling stations. Donc, euh, les petits bureaux de vote euh, font partie de notre programme électeur en herbe, euh, Voters in Training. Et euh, donc, en fait, ce sont des petits bureaux de vote qui sont placés dans tous les bureaux de vote euh, de la province lors d'élections provinciales. Euh, les jeunes sont invités à accompagner leurs parents et puis... Euh, donc, on a vraiment un bureau de vote qui est accessible pour les enfants euh, et on, leur, on les invite là, à voter. Évidemment, ils ne votent pas pour les candidats euh, qui se présentent à l'élection. Les jeunes vont voter pour une question euh, qui leur est euh, posée sur les valeurs démocratiques, par exemple. Euh, cette année, en raison euh, de la pandémie, on devait euh, avoir un projet pilote euh, des petits bureaux de vote dans les... Euh, bureau de vote euh, municipaux, puisqu'il y a une élection municipale au Québec le 7 novembre prochain. Donc, euh, ce qu'on a fait, c'est qu'on a développé une version virtuelle du petit bureau de vote. Alors, le Small Virtual Polling Station, euh, qui est disponible sur le site d'élection Québec euh, pendant la période électorale, donc en ce moment. Euh, encore une fois, euh, on essaie d'initier les différentes étapes euh, du vote auprès des jeunes, euh, avec les parents, évidemment, qui accompagnent leurs jeunes à travers le processus. Puis, euh, la question euh, pour les jeunes, c'est... Euh, donc, euh, en lien avec les élections. Donc, quelle est la qualité la plus importante pour une mairesse ou pour un maire? Donc, what's the most important quality uh, in a mayor? Donc, euh, on, on espère qu'il y aura autant de participation, puis on espère aussi, on souhaite que pour les élections provinciales de 2022, euh, la situation soit revenue euh, à la normale et qu'on puisse euh, retourner euh, dans les petits bureaux de vote euh, sur place là, dans, dans les. Deuxième principe, euh, la démocratie, ça s'apprend. Hein, comme les sciences, comme euh, les mathématiques, la démocratie, elle peut être enseignée aux jeunes. Euh, L'éducation à la démocratie euh, intégrée dans le parcours pédagogique de différentes matières scolaires, euh, comme ça peut se faire euh, en histoire, en sciences sociales, euh, par exemple. Donc, chez Élections Québec, on a développé euh, la zone d'éducation à la démocratie. Alors, euh, c'est une section de notre site web, puis comme Mathieu présentait, euh, notre site web est aussi <rire> en refonte. Donc, euh, au début de l'an prochain, notre zone d'éducation à la démocratie sera revampée avec beaucoup plus de contenu euh, visuel et intéressant, mais euh, on a quand même regroupé sur notre site euh, différentes activités euh, éducatives euh, qui sont euh, clés en main, donc euh, qui sont prêtes. Alors, il y a toujours... Euh, un guide pour l'enseignant, le, le, le matériel à utiliser euh, et euh, évidemment, là, quand, dans le, le cadre de certaines activités, les, les corriger. Euh, les activités euh, sont développées pour le primaire et pour le secondaire, donc euh, pour tous les niveaux, dépendamment des programmes. Euh, et puis, évidemment, euh, la plupart sont disponibles en français et en anglais euh, également. Euh, par exemple, euh, on a différentes activités qui vont porter sur les différents paliers de gouvernement. Puis là, Rachel, j'ai mis, <rire> mis notre, notre bel outil qu'on a développé en partenariat avec euh, l'ensemble des, euh, des organismes de gestion électorale du Canada, qui est euh, « Quelle élection » ou « What election » avec euh, différentes capsules vidéo. Donc, on peut euh, aussi euh, survoler euh, le droit de vote au Québec avec une ligne du temps interactive. Alors, il y a différentes activités comme ça euh, qui touchent à différents liens euh, et qui ont des liens, évidemment, avec le programme d'éducation euh, de, de, du Québec, en fait. Um, aussi, sur le, je ne l'ai pas mentionné, mais on a des petites capsules vidéo qui viennent résumer aussi différents aspects euh, qu'on appelle la Minute démocratique euh, qui sont disponibles sur notre site, mais aussi sur notre, euh, notre YouTube. Euh, le troisième grand principe, euh, la démocratie, eh bien, ça se vit, ça s'expérimente. Ça s'expérimente. Puis, pour que les jeunes puissent vraiment comprendre la démocratie, il faut créer ces espaces-là, ces expériences-là. Puis, ils peuvent avoir, de vivre des occasions là, euh, significative de démocratie, des expériences concrètes de démocratie. Là, je vous dirais qu'on a deux programmes forts euh, par rapport à ça. Euh, le programme Vox Populi, sa démocratie à l'école. Alors, euh, c'est un programme qui s'adresse aux écoles primaires et secondaires, encore une fois, et c'est euh, un programme d'accompagnement des écoles pour la mise en place de conseils d'élèves. Euh, donc, euh, le conseil d'élèves euh, au sein d'une école 
a une place importante en gouvernance scolaire. Donc, euh, on accompagne les écoles au niveau euh, du, de la formation des jeunes, euh, aussi avec du support euh, pédagogique, du matériel euh, qui est envoyé là, dans chacune des écoles inscrites. Donc, hier, justement, j'étais en formation là, avec un conseil d'élèves ici. Euh, donc, l'approche est personnalisée. Euh, tous les conseils d'élèves sont différents, toutes les écoles du Québec sont différentes. Donc, euh, on essaie de personnaliser l'approche selon les besoins euh, de chacune des écoles. Euh, et euh, c'est ça. Donc, euh, le, je dirais que le, le, le plus gros élément de ce programme-là, c'est que, bon, en temps de pandémie, ça a été plus difficile. L'an passé, on n'a pas pu aller à la rencontre de nos conseils d'élèves, de nos jeunes. Mais euh, cette année, on a eu l'autorisation de retourner dans les écoles. Donc, on a plusieurs euh, personnes de mon équipe qui sont en ce moment euh, dispersées sur le territoire du Québec pour euh, donner des formations euh, et rencontrer les conseils d'élèves des euh, écoles. On a un peu plus de 200 écoles là, qui sont inscrites au programme euh, actuellement. Ça varie euh, d'année en année. L'an passé, évidemment, il y a eu une diminution parce qu'il y a plusieurs écoles qui n'ont pas réussi non plus à mettre en place euh, le programme. Mais euh, ce programme-là, c'est un, un programme qui existe depuis 2015, qui est en collaboration avec l'Assemblée nationale du Québec. Donc, on travaille là, en partenariat euh, avec l'Assemblée nationale sur ce projet-là. Euh, pour nous, euh, comme je disais, là, la place du conseil d'élèves dans l'école, euh, ça permet aux jeunes euh, de faire entendre leur voix et de participer dans les décisions de l'école qui vont impacter leur vie. Euh, souvent, je leur dis hein, qu'ils sont les yeux et les oreilles euh, dans l'école. Euh, ça leur permet aussi de, de faire l'expérience d'une euh, élection. Pour la plupart, ils sont élus comme membres de leur conseil d'élèves, euh, puis aussi d'exercer leur rôle de représentant. Euh, souvent aussi, euh, c'est l'étincelle du début de leur engagement. Euh, puis on voit souvent, euh, ça arrive qu'on voit des jeunes dans un, un parlement, dans leur école au primaire, puis par la suite, on les retrouve euh, dans leur école secondaire et même euh, au-delà. Euh, de ça. Le second programme fort, j'en ai parlé un peu avec les petits bureaux de vote, les small polling stations, c'est Voters in Training, ou euh, les électeurs en herbe. Alors, euh, ce programme-là, pour certains qui connaissent le programme euh, de vote étudiant, euh, c'est un programme similaire qui euh, se retrouve au Québec pour les élections provinciales et les élections euh, municipales. Donc, c'est vraiment euh, une euh, initiation à l'exercice du vote par des simulations électorales. Euh, elle s'adresse aux écoles secondaires euh, et aux écoles primaires de troisième cycle. Il y a aussi un volet pour les organisations, euh, donc les organismes jeunesse, euh, comme les maisons de jeunes, par exemple. Et euh, le programme est aussi offert en français et en anglais. Euh, Lorsque les écoles s'inscrivent, euh, on envoie évidemment tout le matériel électoral, on envoie les bulletins de vote parce que les jeunes vont voter pour les vrais candidats cette fois-ci. Donc, euh, on doit préparer les bulletins de vote et puis on envoie aussi du matériel pédagogique. Donc, il y a différentes activités qui sont développées pour permettre euh, aux enseignants, aux responsables euh, d'animer euh, des séances de formation avec les jeunes. Euh, cette année aussi, on a développé des ateliers en ligne. Donc, euh, c'est des petites activités de 20 minutes qui sont animées par notre équipe aussi euh, et les écoles peuvent s'inscrire et puis euh, ça fonctionne quand même assez bien. C'est un projet pilote cet été, cette année, mais je pense que je pense qu'on va probablement le remettre en, en place pour euh, les élections euh, provinciales parce que là, en ce moment, là c'est vraiment les simulations euh, des élections municipales là, qui sont en, en cours et euh, les résultats vont être affichés le, à partir du 8 novembre, donc euh, le lendemain des élections municipales. Donc, euh, ben, ça leur offre l'opportunité, comme je disais, d'exercer de, de, leur droit de vote, euh, de se familiariser aussi avec le système, avec nos institutions démocratiques, puis de faire l'expérience de l'élection, puis de développer aussi leur, euh, leur, euh, leur esprit critique. Euh, et encore une fois, là, de leur volonté de s'engager, parce que souvent dans les écoles, euh, on demande aux jeunes de vraiment participer. C'est eux qui deviennent euh, personnel électoral pour la journée euh, de, de l'élection. Donc, deux gros programmes chez nous. Euh, il y a un autre programme qui est mis en place cette fois-ci lors des élections provinciales partielles. Vous allez comprendre pourquoi. En fait, vivre les coulisses d'une élection, c'est une initiation aux opérations électorales. Donc, c'est un peu un stage d'observation d'une journée euh, d'élection. Donc, euh, 
en, en élection générale, on n'a pas le temps de faire ça. On n'a pas le, le personnel non plus pour pouvoir le faire dans les 125 circonscriptions. Donc, il est offert lorsqu'il y a des élections partielles seulement. Donc, euh, c'est un programme qui s'adresse pour les, les euh, jeunes du niveau euh, secondaire. Et puis, euh, donc, on passe la journée avec eux sur le terrain. Souvent, euh, au Québec, pour les élections provinciales, les, les, euh, les écoles sont fermées et deviennent des bureaux de vote. Donc, on transforme leur école en, en bureau de vote et ils assistent à, à cette transformation-là. Et puis, on fait le tour de différents bureaux de vote dans la circonscription. Ils vont rencontrer le personnel électoral, euh, le directeur de scrutin, le directeur général des élections aussi, quand c'est possible. Puis, euh, il y a même une possibilité de, de participer, là, évidemment pas de compter les bulletins de vote, mais de, de participer euh, à la... À, au comptage du bulletin de vote à la fin euh, de la soirée. Donc, euh, c'est un programme qu'on qu qu aimerait améliorer. Euh, on a fait des recommandations auprès de, des législateurs dans notre dernier rapport annuel de gestion pour permettre aux jeunes de 16 ans et plus d'être personnel électoral parce que pour le moment, euh, la loi électorale au Québec, euh, euh, pour être personnel électoral, on doit avoir le statut euh, d'électeur. Donc, euh, notre souhait, ce serait de, de permettre aux jeunes de 16 ans et plus de participer. Et donc, là, on, on viendrait faire vraiment un stage, pas juste d'observation, euh, mais euh, pour permettre aux jeunes de travailler sur le terrain. Donc, euh, on verra si euh, nos recommandations seront entendues euh, par euh, les législateurs. Dernière, euh, dernier grand principe en hein, la démocratie, euh, c'est euh, partager, ça se partage. En fait, euh, pour nous, à l'Élection Québec, la démocratie, l'éducation, la démocratie, c'est une responsabilité de tous. Hein. C'est une responsabilité, évidemment, de nos institutions, mais c'est toute la société qui doit euh, y participer, que ce soit l'école, la famille, euh, les milieux, euh, les différents milieux communautaires, euh, pour permettre aux jeunes là, de comprendre puis d'expérimenter de, cette démocratie-là. Donc, euh, on, on travaille euh, sur, différentes, euh, sur différents aspects, mais pour nous, l'école, euh, ça reste quand même un lieu euh, qui est vraiment, euh, je dirais, prioritaire ou qui, qui est vraiment celui qui, qui est le plus euh, approprié pour permettre aux jeunes de faire ces apprentissages-là. Euh, et donc, on, a travaillé, on, on travaille actuellement sur une stratégie pour euh, définir un peu... Euh, la place euh, de l'éducation à la citoyenneté dans l'école. Hein, au Québec, euh, ça ne fait pas partie euh, du curriculum comme tel. Il y a différents éléments d'éducation à la citoyenneté, mais il n'y a pas de cours sur euh, l'éducation à la citoyenneté. Euh, donc, on est en train d'observer comment il est enseigné, de euh, quelle façon on pourrait le bonifier. Euh, et donc, euh, on devrait présenter ces résultats-là au printemps prochain. Euh, puis, on, on souhaite là, réunir plusieurs acteurs euh, lors de cet événement-là. Donc, j'espère que j'ai pas pris trop de votre temps. J'espère que euh, les informations euh, vous, ont, euh, euh, vous ont plu. Et puis, euh, comme je vous disais, euh, vous pouvez euh, visiter notre site euh, électionquebec.qc.ca baroblique Z. La version anglaise est disponible aussi. Donc, euh, vous pouvez euh, voir toutes les, les activités euh, et les descriptions des différents programmes euh, sur le site. Puis, euh, vous allez avoir accès aussi à notre adresse courriel si vous voulez envoyer des commentaires ou des questions. Euh, ça va nous faire plaisir euh, d'y répondre. Alors, euh, merci beaucoup. Thank you. Uh, merci beaucoup, Judy. That was great. I, I learned so much more about your program every time I hear you speak. Um, so, I'm just going to get my share up. And très bien. Um, <laughs> it was so interesting to see a snapshot of your Four principles in action, Judy, um, from Elections Quebec. Um, what was amazing was how you've integrated it from early years right through till senior years. I really appreciated that. So a lot of great resources for educators. So without Thank further ado, you, uh, Rachel. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm just having trouble with my screens. Things moved around on me. And is my video on? What has happened no, to not. my video? Oh my goodness. I think my uh, I think my video cord just got loose or something. Okay, wait, switch. Switch. Uh, 
Oh, no, it just, it's not started. It stopped oh, for some we reason. We can see you now. It's perfect. Perfect. Amazing. Okay. So I'm going to do the opposite of what Judy did. So my slides are in French and I'm going to speak in English. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, so like uh, Linda said, my, my job is now, I'm a pedagogical advisor with Elections Canada. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty great place to be. Um, so, uh, for more than 20 years, Elections Canada has worked with educators to engage future voters and prepare them to participate in our federal electoral democracy. Um, we provide teachers from all provinces and territories with learning resources, helpful tools, student-friendly information about elections in Canada, and professional development opportunities. So during federal elections, we also work with civics uh, to deliver Student Vote Canada. In 2018, we began renewing our resources, and that's sort of when I came on board, and, and we continue to update them so that we can support teachers uh, in teaching about elections and democracy, no matter the time of year. So uh, let's take a few, let's take a quick look at some of our classroom resources. Uh, so the first thing that we did was we reached out to teachers across Canada um, and we, we listened to what teachers need. Uh, and what we heard was that you want uh, resources that are inquiry-based, cross-curricular, collaborative, nonpartisan, bilingual, accessible, and free. Um, so those were sort of our guideposts as we were developing these resources. Um, and we definitely know that you need to teach about democracy and elections all year, whether there is a federal election or not. Uh, and our resources are designed to help you do that. So a quick look at all of our secondary resources. Uh, you can order or download them from our website anytime. There's the link uh, in English. It's electionsanddemocracy.ca. I think it's on my background. Um, and... Uh, uh, we have uh, sent out over 32,000 physical resource kits um, to teachers across Canada since we launched in September 2018. Uh, and we continue to add, so uh, Judy will recognize our uh, quelle election or which election uh, resource here uh, developed with, uh, with provincial electoral management bodies as well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so to address uh, teachers' needs for remote learning tools during the pandemic lockdowns, we developed uh, blended learning adaptations for many of our resources. Uh, and uh, you know they continue to be a great option. They're still available. We, we will continue to have them available. And I'll show you a little bit about what they look like today. So each lesson uses inquiry-rich pedagogy and includes a big idea, an inquiry question, and a three-part lesson structure with a minds-on activity and consolidation. Um, and also lots of hands-on materials like videos, maps, data, infographics, and case studies. So it's not like you have to send your students to go find all these things. We provide them whatever you need for the lesson. So let's take a look at one of our most popular resources. So this is uh, Voting Rights Through Time. So here, uh, this is one of my favorite photos. Uh, you can see the Chief Electoral Officer of Canada here, Stéphane Perrault, uh, and he's working with some students in Toronto to examine case studies on voting rights. Uh, so this is uh, the, the kit, we send it out. Um, it includes four, well, it, it has included up until yesterday, four case studies, women, youth, Japanese, Canadians, and First Nations peoples. And you'll notice um, there's a new one here, it's blue. It's the Inuit case study. Um, so we've just soft launched this. So this is available to download and, and print off and in blended versions um, on our website uh, right now. And uh, we're doing sort of a whole revamp of the, um, of the, the print resource and that, that'll be coming in sort of winter or, or spring 2022. Um, and so what students do here is they consider the inquiry question, how inclusive is our democracy? They work in small groups, uh, placing these case study cards uh, that look like this, or you can see them in the picture, um, on the activity mat to build a timeline. And the timeline has, um, they discuss and come to an agreement about where to place the cards on the, uh, not just the chronological timeline, but also the inclusion to exclusion scale. That's kind of, you can sort of see it over here a little bit. Uh, so this is sometimes called a timeline with attitude or a living graph. Um, it's you know a part of historical thinking concepts, and it's a way to engage students in uh, continuity and change. So uh, voting rights through time and some of our other resources are also uh, available in language learner versions to meet your needs for accessibility. 
Uh, so blended learning uh, is the purposeful use of both online and in-class tools and strategies to support learning goals. Uh, so like I said, developed in 2020, our blended learning adaptations provide you with accessible tools through the Google Apps Suite that allow you to adapt and use our hands-on resources in your online or blended learning classrooms. So we provide a blended learning menu so you can choose the online and in-person learning path that will work best for your students. Um, and you can see here, this is the blended learning adaptation of voting rights through time. So students uh, first use this, uh, they use a Google form to kind of consider each event individually. Uh, then they can collaborate using this Google Draw to create the timeline together. Uh, or they can do some parts online and, and others in person. And the blended learning menu provides all the options. So all of our blended learning tools are available for teachers to copy and use right away in the classroom. Um, and you, you can certainly order the physical kits as well, if that's appropriate in your public health situation, wherever you are. Uh, so as I said, all, also Elections Canada has worked with Civics to run Student Vote Canada since 2004. So it's very similar to the program that Judy just outlined for us that, that Election Quebec runs in Quebec. Um, so uh, it's a mock parallel election. I, I expect most of you here um, have are pretty aware of this program um, and it coincides with the real federal election. And it's an authentic learning experience that prepares students to participate in our elections and democracy. Uh, so after participating in in Student Vote Canada, 75% of students reported feeling more prepared to vote in the future, which is what we want to hear. Um, in the 2021 election, over 800,000 students participated in all 338 federal ridings, like that election we just had. Um, for a full breakdown of the results by province, riding, and school, you can go to studentvote.ca slash Canada um, and, uh, and, and see, what, uh, see what the results are wherever you are. Uh, it's a fantastic way to engage your students during a federal election and uh, yeah. Okay, one of our classic resources for grades four to 12 got a big update uh, recently. So this is the election simulation toolkit and it now features uh, inquiry best the inquiry based pedagogy found in our other resources and puts a greater emphasis on role play involving more students, just like Mathieu's uh, great uh, simulation activity um, in active participation. Uh, so you can kind of see we have these role cards here uh, for different uh, different groups and, and a poster that comes with the activity as well as the ballot box and voting screen. So students identify an issue in their own school or community. And they work together to develop a campaign aimed at tackling that issue. Then they use realistic election materials to vote for the candidate they think had the best campaign. Uh, so the kit always featured the roles of election officers and voters, but it now includes that broader range of roles, including candidates, campaign managers, speech writers, and others. Um, and a template to help learners at any level write a persuasive campaign speech and keep the whole process moving so that the lesson can fit into one class period, uh, which is uh, definitely a bonus for most secondary teachers and, and a strong message that we keep receiving from teachers. Uh, so we do have lots of other helpful tools on our website to support you and your students. Uh, and so we can take a look at some of these uh, right now. We've got a couple minutes left. Um, so we do have our, this is our homepage, what it looks like. Um, we've always got new things for uh, information, resources, uh, we've got highlights, we've got blog posts, um, updates and information about our programs. And we also have helpful resources that we'll promote at special times. For example, uh, after the election, we had some post-election activities up and during the last U.S. election we created a comparing electoral systems resource that is still on our website it's just not on our home page anymore because there's no U.S. election going on at the moment. Um, we also have a basic overview of Canada's federal election process. So this is one of the most popular pages on our website and it outlines the steps of an election in very student-friendly language. It's a great reference if you're, you're looking for accurate information on the election process. We also, uh, our educational resources link to secondary level curricula in every province and territory. Uh, and we have this uh, curriculum connections tool that where you can search by province or territory and by course or subject area. Um, since curricula are always changing, we've recently updated our tool to make sure that the uh, over 1400 data points um, are accurate and that you can find the resources that are most relevant for your classroom. You know, it sounds simple. <laughs> um, 
we also have a great FAQ. Um, how does Elections Canada keep our elections secure? Is Canada introducing online voting? Why can't people under 18 vote? How can I work in the next election? These are some of the questions that young people from across Canada have asked us over the years. Um, on this page, we provide clear and accurate answers along with links to more information and discussion questions to keep the conversation going in your classrooms. We also offer several professional learning options to support you with just-in-time learning uh, right across Canada. Uh, so uh, we know that your time is precious, so we created a series of five-minute teacher support videos that give you a quick overview of how to use our resources, as well as insider tips to help you engage all your learners. Uh, you can find all the videos in the professional learning section of our website, and they're also you can also find a link to the support video for a specific learning resource on the resource page itself under enhancements. So there's lots of ways to get to them. Uh, if you're looking for a bit more than a five minute video, uh, you can find us at virtual or in person events like this one uh, right across the country. Any time of year, we have a conferences and events page uh, that has the full list of events we're attending, and this list is updated uh, regularly. Uh, if you happen to be in Toronto, you can reach out to our educator in Toronto, Zoe Flatman, um, who can come and do classroom demos uh, and is part of a pilot project to test the uh, on the ground, um, the effects of on the ground um, learning. And all our resources are available in French and English. Uh, you can um, see them, download them and order everything from our website. Uh, electionsanddemocracy.ca, and uh, you can also follow us on social media, and we'd really love to see uh, what your students do with our resources in the classroom. Thank you. Wow, fantastic. As you can see, even from the uh, participants, they've all put, this is amazing. And, um, you know, thanks to our three panelists uh, from um, uh, Quebec and from uh, the uh, Teachers uh, Parliament and uh, from Elections and Democracy. Um, you know, democracy is in good hands in Canada. And in, uh, there's so much so many resources that you can go to. Um, I think that uh, we we have to move on. Uh, Rachel, I think uh, besides wearing the hat, obviously, as the pedagogical um, advisor, you're also uh, the uh, in charge of this session. So I, I know you have to get going. But if there yeah. are any questions, yeah, I don't know whether we can still take them. But is it uh, uh, four yeah. o'clock that we're or five o'clock your time that we go into or are we I go believe right I think we are at the end of the day and I yeah. am required uh, to go <laughs> to go yeah. over to the closing let me just uh, double okay. check on that and we have one question one hand up I see I don't know whether um that too oh, Diane hi oh, okay yeah <laughs> quick question so I'm working as an educational consultant for elections Ontario just for one year and uh, I can see that we have a lot to do based on our um, <laughs> Parts across the country. Um, my question is um, for all three of you, have you ever thought about doing something that connects the different regions or classrooms across your territory, province, or the nation in some kind of competition or conference where you're bringing um, different students together? Uh, well, in Quebec, we, uh, for the student councils, we work with uh, ENM, which is an, uh, an organization uh, that works for youth involvement. And uh, we've been organizing um, Le Rendez-vous National des Jeunes Élus uh, for the three, three past years. Last year was a virtual meeting, but uh, yeah, so um, it's in March and students from student councils across uh, the province are invited to Quebec for a two day uh, event. So they have a tour of the parliament. Uh, there are different training sessions. And of course, uh, just getting to meet other student councils from across the province is really, really nice. Hopefully we'll be able to organize this uh, next March. We'll see if it's uh, still a virtual uh, meeting, but yes, um, that's one of the, the pro projects that we're working on uh, right now to get the kids together. Thank you. That's an amazing idea, actually. It's, I think um, targeting student councils is 
something unique I haven't seen from another, any other partner. So good job. <laughs> Thanks. So if there aren't any, or Matu, did you want to respond to the question or? Oh, uh, I, I can, yeah. And you know, our our outreach is mostly focused on on teachers, actually. Yeah. So we we yeah. haven't actually done large programs. Um, we do work with a number of uh, mock parliaments that operate both in the Senate and the House of Commons. I mean, obviously, those haven't run in the last few years. Um, but we have worked with uh, youth agencies, as far as I know, because I know they do one in in Queens Park, where they do a provincial mock parliament, where they bring students from across the or the province to do it. Um, but as far as I know, there's there's nothing comparable on the federal stage. Okay, thank you. Well, if there are no other questions, I don't see any other hands raised. Uh, we should all gather for the closing ceremony. So once again, uh, thanks for your participation and thanks to the panelists for the sharing your wisdom and expertise on democracy. Thanks. Thank you, Linda. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.